In this series, I'm going to advance a thesis that I expect some will find startling and many will consider controversial. Every evangelistic program makes personal testimony the centerpiece of evangelism. Jesus can change your life like he did mine. That's the theme of every evangelist today. But the reality is that what we call apologetics, not personal testimony, was the model for evangelism in the very beginning. Some years ago, I wrote an article for the Christian Research Journal entitled, When Apologetics Was Evangelism, which you can read in full at the link in the vid description. I'll be referring to it frequently in these next few points, and in part what I say here is an update to and continuation of what I wrote there, after some years of reflection. As in the article, I'll still allow that personal testimony can have a certain limited use, inasmuch as it is a form of evidence, although of the weakest, most questionable sort. But based on the model of the New Testament, it isn't a model for how we're supposed to evangelize at all. If you read the evangelistic sermons in Acts, you can see that the call for belief in Christ was based solely on evidence, particularly the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, the imitation of Old Testament prophecy, and the miraculous works done by Jesus and the apostles. Personal testimony? It's not in there, and for good reason. People in the collectivist society of the biblical world believed that personality was static and that personal change was practically impossible. That's why when the Apostle Paul declared that he had become a Christian, rather than accepting it with rejoicing, the Christians were suspicious of him. Their first assumption would have been that it was a trick Paul was pulling to get himself inside the church so he could further his persecution efforts. To round off, I'll need to address the obvious counter that the New Testament does offer examples of personal testimony. The passages you see listed below are the ones most commonly appealed to as examples of this. But if we take a closer look at these, we find that any resemblance to personal testimony is incidental. In the first case from Philippians, Paul isn't speaking to non-Christians, which means he isn't evangelizing. Rather than witnessing to his faith as an evangelist, he was illustrating for vulnerable believers the moral contrast between himself and those who were preaching false doctrine. Then we have this example from Acts. This is a little stronger since Paul actually is talking to non-Christians. But notice also that Paul is on trial defending himself against charges that he was trying to inspire sedition among the Jews. The only reason he recounts his former life is to affirm that he was previously a zealous believer in Judaism. He then trumps the charge of sedition by arguing that his Christian faith was consistent with Jewish beliefs in the resurrection of the dead, so that not only was he a sincere Jew in his former life, he remained one even as a Christian. Paul's purpose was to show that he could not have been a mover of sedition, disloyal to Jewish sensibilities, for he himself was still a loyal Jew, believing all things which are written in the Law and in the Prophets, and finding what was written there fulfilled in Christ. He does not follow the pattern of the modern personal testimony, because he doesn't appeal to the changes in his life as a reason for Agrippa to become a Christian.